Rub up your engines! Wow, here's some interesting news. Maybe it'll tank the stock for a while. Tesla is shutting down their final assembly plant in Tilburg in the Netherlands. So they're talking about growing, growing, growing. Well, they're shutting one of their plants down now. This is where they put together Model S's and Model X's in the Netherlands. Reports are coming from the Netherlands state that Tesla's shutting down the production part of this plant. And of course, as usual, they have Tesla BS. I quote, Tesla will stop very shortly with assembling the Model S and X in Tilburg. The models were upgraded, which changed the production process. Yada, yada, yada. You know, they're shutting the plant down and then they give some BS about the reason behind it. They said, well, maybe they'll repurpose it, you know. <laughs> kind of reminds me of a guy I met years ago who was making this three wheel car. It was never made. They supposedly were going to lease the factory in uh, Louisiana where they used to make the Hummers. Old Elon Musk, he's went a long way further than that. There's no arguing that. He's got a lot more money behind him, too. But the Ilya Motors, they never made anything but a couple of mock ups using Geo Metro junkyard motors and fiberglass bodies. I doubt if the guy's ever going to make a single car. But this kind of reminds me of that, you know. Oh, well. Well, you know, we were changing our production process. We're shutting that plant down. Hey, when you shut plants down, that says things aren't working out too great for you, you know. And they can powder coat everything they want, make it look like it's working out. But hey, you watch as Volkswagen starts mass producing electric cars, they're going to take over from old Tesla for sure. And who knows how many people are even going to buy the Volkswagen electric car? There's only so much electrification that's going to go on. The Europeans, sure, they're going to build it up because they're making laws that they have to. Take the Netherlands, for example. One of their airports there. I know you can't take anything out of there but an electric car, electric bus. They only elect electric vehicles come to the airport to pick people up and drop them off. So yeah, they're going to have to buy a certain amount of them. But here in the United States, it's going to be a lot longer before the chips settle down and with Volkswagen making electric cars next year in Chattanooga, Tennessee down the road. Watch out for Volkswagen if you ask me. They just sent that gigantic deal with a battery company for billions of dollars for making the new types of batteries that are more efficient. So I just find it amusing that they're shutting this factory down the Netherlands. They don't give you much press, but at least people are finding out, and guys like me are going to tell you about it. Well, here's some interesting news. Hyzon Motors says that in this quarter, they're going to start launching hydrogen fuel celled 18 wheel trucks. Now, this is a company that's headquartered in Rochester, New York, where they have a lot of hydrogen fuel cell stuff going on. You know anything about Rochester? Rochester Institute of Technology, very good engineering school. So, kudos to them. They're jumping on a bandwagon with reality. Now, Hyzon Motors already has delivered 500 electric fuel cell vehicles worldwide so far, but that's just the beginning. Hyzon Motors produces is some of the most efficient fuel cells in the world, the hydrogen fuel cells. They have the second most powerful ones, second behind the Toyota Mirai. Currently, they're testing one that is more efficient than even the Toyota. The Toyota's fuel cell is 1.2 watts per squared centimeter, and they're working at 1.5 watts per square centimeter. And they're also working on creating hydrogen hubs that are ecologically creating hydrogen. They want to use the decomposition of organic material to create energy to produce hydrogen. So, hey, it's just starting, but boy, when the wheels start spinning, guys in Rochester, there's no fool. They actually started out in Europe because there's more of a hub for hydrogen there. And they said by 2023, they plan on having 5,000 of them sold to Europe. So, these guys in Rochester, Mr. Heisen, they're going to have step up with a lot of the electric vehicles and they're testing them in Europe and I'm sure eventually there'll be hubs of them in the United States. It's just a matter of time. The problem with gas is the only efficient way of doing gas is pipeline. If you make it liquid, then you got to liquefy it cryogenically, ship it with trucks, tanks, boats, whatever. Pipelines, very easy to send gas. Guess what? The United States is full of pipelines and easily convert them to hydrogen when they have an infrastructure for it. So watch out, people with battery electric trucks, the hydrogen fuel cell guys are right behind you. Pretty soon they're going to pass you. Well, I can't help but laugh at this one. GM is shutting down their CCA World Headquarters in Grand Blanc Township in Michigan. Now, that is their customer care headquarters. 
<laughs> and for what I've seen of people I met who owned GM products and had problems, they didn't really care whatsoever. <laughs> That's normal. Oh, they all do that. Oh, they burn oil. That's how all engines are. That's what they tell them. No wonder they're shutting it down. I guess maybe people got so mad with those people that they just shut the whole thing down. Or perhaps they're going to be like old Elon and Tesla where he's shutting down all the places where people can complain about it so it looks like he's good. He's like a YouTuber who gets all these comments about, hey, you're an idiot. You know what you're talking about. Just erases all the bad comments. Whether customer care, they're shutting that thing down in Michigan now. And here's their baloney inter-office memo. GM is shifting the location of certain groups in Michigan to increase collaboration amongst our teams. <laughs> yeah, amongst our teams. It's supposed to be customer care, right? And they're worried about the collaboration amongst their own teams. Not the collaboration with their customers that have problems. <laughs> we got a bureaucratic nightmare here. I guess GM is kind of like classic Chinese civilization. They build up these giant bureaucracies and they just exist for their own existence. They don't really don't care about doing anything. They just keep their little pecking order going amongst themselves. That's just too much. Shutting down their customer care center there. <laughs> <laughs> One layer of bureaucracy on top of another. That's the problem with big corporations, you know? Start rolling down a hill like a giant boulder and you can't stop them. And what do boulders do? They go downhill, just like the quality of GM has for decades. 2000 Green Acura says, Good morning, Scott. Hope you're doing I'm from Quebec. I have a 2000 Acura EL, which has 83,000 kilometers. Had 35 miles a gallon last summer. It's now making 21, and sometimes it's worse. My tire pressure is good spark plugs when I change my air filter. Help. It's very low mileage. So, the first thing I'll tell you to do is watch my video, make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. Get mass airflow cleaner and throttle spray cleaner and clean them both. Watch the video. It's a very simple process. You can do it 40 minutes of your own work and $16 worth of spray cleaner. That should fix it. Often it's dirty. Now, if it doesn't, have a mechanic like myself check it. Maybe the mass airflow sensor has gone bad. They go bad, you get horrible gas mileage. You said you changed the air filter, so it's not that. Make sure, of course, that it's shifting correctly. If there's a problem in the transmission and it's staying in lower gears, watch your tachometer. As long as when you're going 70 miles an hour, it's shift through all the gears and it's going at a lower RPM, it's not your transmission. It could be that if it isn't shifting. You can easily see that. If it's revving too high on the highway, you'll know it's not shifting into high gear and overdrive. If none of those fix it, Pay a mechanic like me to hook up fuel injecting the cleaner machine. We have very expensive ones that have various chemicals, and in an hour it will clean all the fuel injectors. It could be the fuel injectors are dirty. There's a lot of things that could theoretically go wrong. That would be the last thing to do. Try the other ones first, because often just the spray cleaner will fix it yourself, cleaning the throttle and the mass air flow sensor. Andret 15 says, I'm looking at a 2006 Tundra Limited V8, four-wheel drive, one owner, all maintenance records since heads, no accidents, 225,000 miles for eight grand. All right, Tundras go for a lot of money. There's no arguing that. 225,000 miles is a lot of miles on a vehicle. Now, I would try to offer less, but, and this is a gigantic but, those things are hard to find, and that's a one owner. I just say go ahead and buy, as long as the mechanic checks it out and says it's running good now, because a little bit higher than I'd want to pay, but on the other hand, where are you going to find another one owner one that's got all the records? Now, let's say you got 225,000 miles. Let's see, in 80, 90,000 miles, the engine finally goes out. Well, my grandson here is looking for a used one, and I found out that I could get a totally rebuilt by an expert engine for that thing, V8, for about four grand. It was rebuilt by a guy who really knows what he's doing. So even if it goes out, you can get that engine for four grand, pay somebody maybe a thousand bucks to put it in. You got a brand new engine that can run forever. So I would never poo poo a one owner like that. And you might hurry up and look at it because they sell fast. My grandson's already lost two or three of them that he's thinking that's a little bit too high and then somebody else bought it out from under him. So you got to realize that with a the Tundra, they go fast. Scout says, I got a Celica 2.2 liter five speed 1998 manual transmission. My gearbox leaks oil. Do you think I have to remove the box or are there other? seals. It's not the drain or fill plugs. Well, realize it's a standard transmission. So, you can check the obvious things. Now, I would say replace both axle seals, each side with the axle snap in. Those are seals that replace those seals. Pray that fixes it. Because if it doesn't, then you would have to pull the transmission off and replace the front main seal of the transmission because that's between the engine and transmission that are bolted together. And you're going to have to pull the transmission off for that. If that's the case that it is leaking there, I'd say you might as well as replace the whole clutch assembly too because it'll be leaking on the clutch and then that'll slip and wear. And as long as you got that transmission off, you can get a clutch kit with all the parts for 130 40 bucks all day long. I would replace that. Yeah, but try the outside seals first. You don't have to pull the whole transmission off for that, which is a gigantic 
job, of course. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.